Hey everyone, I hope you're doing great. Welcome back to Digital Refill, my name is Damien, and today we're going to be going over my latest video, Waiting for Cyberpunk 2077. So last year when Cyberpunk 2077 was coming out, I really wanted to make a video involving something related to it. And I remember seeing Night City Wire episode four, and they showed a clip of the My Mic car driving and going up a set of stairs, and I, I knew I had to make a video using that car. Typically, I create the script first and then create everything after. But in this case, since I knew for sure I was going to need a 3D model of the My Mic car, I started with that first. I had references on my second monitor using Pure Ref, that was filled with screenshots and images of the car that I gathered online. Using Blender, I started blocking out the overall shape of the car to get the proportions and the size right. From there, I broke off smaller chunks that eventually led to all the pieces of the car. Slowly over time, I modeled more details until I was happy. I then added materials like car paint, rubber for the tire, the glass, and so on. Now I had to figure out a way to rig the car. Luckily there's an add-on for Blender called Car Rig Pro on Blender Market by 3D Vision. Go ahead and check it out. It made creating a car rig so much easier and saved me a ton of time. Also just wanted to say thank you to the developer of the add-on. He helped me with questions I had about the add-on as I was using it. Now that 3D modeling and rigging the car was complete, I started to write out a script for the video. I had to restrain myself once again from being too ambitious to make sure I can finish this video before the release of the game. Even then, I did cut out some parts from the original script at the last moment to make sure I hit the deadline I set. Next, I went off trying to find locations that would work for the video. I ended up using a location near a lake and the alley behind where I lived. Having the locations decided, I went and started filming. This was the first time where I used a motorized gimbal for a project. Specifically, I used the Xiaoyun Crane 2S. This gimbal worked flawlessly to get smooth camera movements. It was easy to balance my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K that I used, the battery life is great, and the results speak for themselves in the final video. After shooting all my footage and VFX plates, I made sure to also get an HDRI for the VFX shots. I used my Insta360 1R to create the HDRIs. These help with getting lighting information that can be used to light the scene that has our 3D model in it. In this case, it's the My My Car. The HDRI also serves as a source for reflections. Both these attributes help to make the car blend into our VFX plates. Using the Insta360 1R, I was able to take pictures at different exposures to later combine and create our final HDRI. I ran into a small issue though, the sun. Typically an HDRI has a large dynamic range to cover the brightest and darkest areas of the location you're capturing images. Even with the darkest exposure settings on the Insta360 1R, the sun was still overexposed. Why is this important? Take a look at this scene in Blender. I have a chrome sphere on a plane. In the background, I have the HDRI loaded in, and if you look at the shadows casted by the cars, you can see how sharp those shadows are. Now let's go back to our chrome sphere on a plane. The shadow is diffused and nowhere near as sharp as our reference shadow in the HDRI. This happens when you don't capture the full dynamic range of the location you're trying to make an HDRI out of. This results in a clipped HDRI causing the lighting to seem like it was shot on an overcast date. So to compensate for this problem, I had a simple solution. I added a sun and that helped with recreating the shadows we see based on the shadows we are referencing. After shooting all my footage and getting all the HRIs I needed, I locked down an edit of the video. I then worked on every VFX shot one by one. For the first shot of the car parked, I camera tracked the shot using PF track and then took that data into Blender. From there, I placed a 3D model of the My My Car I made into position and added in the ground plane. From there, I added in the sunlight and made sure to match the shadow direction. I keyframed the lights turning on, which was basically a plane with an emissive material. I then made sure to render out two passes, one being the beauty pass of the car and the other being just the shadow pass of the car. In After Effects, I comped together the beauty and shadow pass to get the final shot. Doing it this way enabled me to refine the look of the shadows so they matched the shadows in the footage. I did this by tweaking the color and the darkness of the shadow. I was able to also adjust the beauty pass of the car so I could blend it with the plate by doing some color adjustment. The shot of the car doing donuts was done by first tracking the footage. After that, I was able to go into Blender and animate the car, baking in the animation, then creating a smoke simulation for the tires. I rendered out a beauty pass of the car and also the smoke, and then another pass for the shadows. I threw all that into After Effects and adjusted each pass as needed and then finished off the shot. But wait, what's that? Oh no, there's no one driving the car. Well, time to recreate myself in 3D. I shot footage of myself in a neutral pose and then I took a frame grab of that footage and brought it into Blender. 
I used that as a reference as I 3D modeled myself. I then used the image of myself to project onto the geometry. I left out the feet since we never see that part in the video. Uh, the hands I modeled separately and then brought into the same project file with the body. The head was actually the most challenging part. I settled on using Face Builder from Keen Tools. This tool allowed me to take multiple photos of my head and then project them onto a head 3D model that was created from the Face Builder tool. Once every piece was done, I rigged everything up so I could then adjust the limbs to be in a seated position, holding onto the steering wheel. Now I had to go back to our original shot with the car doing donuts and put myself in the car and re-render everything again and update our composition in After Effects. Now there's actually someone driving in the car. Awesome. For the shot where I reverse and pull up in the car, I shot myself up against a green screen acting out the car reversing and stopping. I had a light stand so I could have my hand somewhat in the area where the steering wheel would be. I keyed myself out and brought that image sequence into Blender so I could play around with the timing of me reversing and stopping the car. After that, I rendered out a beauty pass of the car with the background, another render of the window, and the render of me. I comped it all in After Effects and added a slight shadow at the top of me since light would be blocked off from the roof. Most of the other shots follow the same process of being camera tracked, having the car animated, and then rendering out what's needed for compositing everything together. The shots that are slightly different are the car hitting the boxes and parking in the garage. For the shot of the car hitting the boxes, I first recreated a rough block out of the objects in the footage so that the objects that will be in the physics simulation will look like they're interacting with the objects in our footage. I used cardboard boxes from the Megascans library and placed them into a pile. Mixed within that pile were boxes I 3D modeled and textured. I took these boxes and used the physics simulation to fill them up with these foam peanuts I 3D modeled. I then selected all the foam peanuts plus the box and put them in a collection. I put two of these into the pile, made sure to apply a rigid body to everything getting hit, and then let it simulate. For the shot where the car parks into the garage, I once again recreated the scene in 3D space after the shot was camera tracked. From there, it was just a matter of animating the car and the garage door opening, and also animating that one little box that falls onto the car. I also made sure to keyframe the brake lights and the side lights when the car stops and turns off. From there, I rendered out another beauty and shadow pass to bring into After Effects. Now I had the fun job of rotoscoping out the chair because I completely forgot to move it out of the way when I was shooting the footage. Fun times, fun times. Once that was done, the CG elements looked like they were part of the shot. The ending shot involved green screen removal and screen replacement. I added in some graphics on the monitor and also made this motion graphic shot that plays when the TV turns on. Also that cyberpunk logo animation I completely did in Blender. Then I comped all that into the shot using After Effects and I was done. In the end, I was able to just barely finish the video the day before the game was released, hitting the deadline I set for myself. I hope you guys enjoyed me explaining what went into creating that video. And like usual, if you guys like this kind of stuff and want to support me, go ahead, subscribe, like, comment. There is a lot that I want to learn, especially in the VFX world from real time rendering with Unreal to Houdini. But honestly, it really excites me because I have so many ideas that I want to turn into reality and I really hope that you can join me on this journey. Thank you to everyone watching, and I'll see you next time.